Good evening. 2017 Nobel Prize in Medicine was awarded to Jeffrey Hall, Michael Rosbosch, and Michael Young for their discoveries of molecular mechanisms controlling the circadian rhythm. But let's try to understand what it means for our normal life. Did you ever meet a jet lag? I meet it quite often because to go home first I should fly from Munich to Krasnoyarsk and it is six hour difference in time between these two cities. So when I come, usually it's morning, it's already sunny, but I want to sleep. Of course, I spend the whole night uh, during my trip, but somehow next few days still I would like to sleep during the daytime. And I really need several days to adjust. So something inside of me still doesn't understand that actually I moved from Munich to Krasnoyarsk. And people say that these things which are inside of us tell us what is the time now are these circadian rhythms. Circadian rhythms are approximately 24 hours and they are characteristic for most of living organisms. These are things which these organisms do dependent of uh, daytime. And one of examples of such a thing is opening and closing of uh, flowers of plants. Some plants, they open their flowers during the day and they close them at night, which makes sense because at night there is no pollinators for these flowers. And this is important thing about circadian rhythms. They are highly adaptive. They are needed for organisms to optimally react to the conditions of environment, which are dependent of light and darkness. Probably the first case when circadian rhythm was described in details, uh, it was made by French researcher who was actually an astronomer 300 years ago. He worked with the plant called Mimosa, and this plant it opens its leaves during the day and it closes them in the darkness. And uh, what this researcher did, he placed Mimosa in a complete darkness like this. <laughs> and then he observed that actually in the darkness leaves are still closed. Uh, and this, this cycle, it, it is repeated again and again by Mimosa even in a complete darkness. It opens leaves during the day, it closes leaves at night, but it is in the complete darkness. It doesn't know is it day or night actually right now. And it should mean that there is something inside this plant which tells to it if it is day or night, some kind of internal clock. But what could it be? What could be the physical basis for this internal clock inside of us? To try to understand it, let's go to some basics of our life. We know that us, these are our genomes. Genomes, they bear all information about mm, our body. And genomes, they are DNA, and this DNA includes genes. And basically, sets of our genes, it says uh, who will be us. Some set of genes could make us a humans, and some set of genes could make the one a fly. And uh, genes, they bear information about proteins. And proteins are molecular machines which perform most of the job in our body. So a set of proteins inside a cell, it is a set of capabilities of a cell to do something. Inside the cell, genes are stored in an isolated environment, in a nucleus, isolated part of the cell. And this is makes sense because it's good to store this important information in some safe, isolated environment. But it is also some issue because proteins are synthesized outside this environment, in the cytoplasm. So somehow information from genes inside nucleus should be transferred to the cytoplasm. It should be kind of a messenger for that. And it exists. It's actually molecules of RNA which are synthesized on the genes and then, when they are transferred to the cytoplasm, they are using information written in them 
proteins are synthesized. So the one could hypothesize that if we have kind of internal clock, then maybe it could be some genes and proteins for this machine. But how can we find this gene or genes responsible for internal clock? The one could imagine the quite easy way to do that. Let's just disrupt all genes one by one and then look on the animals with these disrupted genes. Maybe they will lose their internal clock. And of course, to do the thing like this, it's good to work with some kind of easy handle animal. And such an animal, for example, is a fruit fly, Drosophila. We can feed Drosophila with a chemical which disrupts DNA, and then in the offspring of this Drosophila, we will be able to find flies with different single genes disrupted. And then we can analyze these flies for their behavior. The good thing about this experiment is actually most of our human genes, they are very similar to genes in a fruit fly. And it is quite probable that if we will find some gene responsible for something in a fly, human will have the same gene responsible for a very similar function. And this was made by Seymour Benzer and Ronald Kanopka in 1971. Actually, they analyzed flies with different genes disrupted for their behavior. They used infrared camera to analyze movements of flies and they generated this kind of tracks for them. So here each track is movements of individual fly and if this is just a straight line it means that fly was not moving and when we have these black peaks it was movement of this fly. And for normal flies, we can see characteristic 24-hour pattern. Actually, at night, they do not move mostly. They move during the daytime, when they don't move again at night, and so on. This is the normal circadian rhythm of motor activity of these flies. But they find the flies which were not moving like this. Basically, they were asynchronous without this day-night cycle. And they found the gene disrupted in these flies. They called this gene period. Unfortunately, Seymour Benzer and Ronald Kanopka, they could not share Nobel Prize because they died not so far. So, okay, we have this period gene. We know that it is responsible for internal clock. But what does it mean? What does it say to us about the physical basis of this internal clock? Let's go to basics again. So period gene is a normal one. So it means that period RNA is synthesized on this gene when it goes to the cytoplasm and period protein is synthesized. Researchers made quite important observation about that. They observed that during the day, when it is a light time, it's a lot of period RNA, but it's almost nothing about period protein. And vice versa, at night, when it is the darkness, it is a lot of period protein in the cells and almost nothing about period RNA. And this observation led to the hypothesis that actually period protein could go back to the nucleus and then it could block activity of its own gene. There is a normal half-life time for each protein, and it means that when period gene will be blocked, with time period protein will be degraded just by itself, by itself it will be disrupted. And then period gene will be active again, because period protein will not block it anymore. And period RNA will be accumulated again, and period protein will be synthesized again. This set of events leads to the cycling of period protein concentration in the cells. So during the day, concentration of period protein is minimal. When it raises at night, when it goes down again during the day. And this is the basis for our internal clock. And actually, period protein can block activity of dozens of other genes. And then cycling of period protein concentration 
leads to the cycling of concentration of dozens of other proteins. And this discovery was made by Jeffrey Hall and Michael Rosbosch. The next piece to the slide was added by Michael Young. He discovered another component of the system. He discovered a timeless protein, which actually needed for period protein to block activity of period gene. These two proteins act in one complex, and they should be together to block activity of a period gene. And this is a quite important component, because this timeless protein is an input for light in the system. Because there is another protein, cryptochrome, which is sensitive to light. And when it senses light, cryptochrome induces, di induces disruption of timeless protein. In this case, timeless cannot anymore help period protein to block activity of the period gene, period RNA accumulated again, and then we switch to the condition like during the daytime. And the good thing about all of this is that humans have a very similar system. We have also period protein which cycles and which does a basis for our internal clock. So that's the way how I finally adjust to a jet lag, actually. But all these discoveries, they lead to quite a big paradox. Because it means that each cell in our body has its own internal clock. When billions of clocks in one body, how are we going to be synchronized then? And the answer is actually our brain performs this job. Our eyes are sensitive to light when the signal about light is transferred to our brain and specific part of our brain called hippocamp synthesize molecules which goes through our body through blood vessels and which tune the clocks in all our cells. And one of the main of these molecules is a hormone called melatonin and it was shown that there is cycling of concentration of melatonin in our body dependent of the daytime. Concentration of it is minimal during the day, it raises at night when it goes down and so on. And it was shown that proper melatonin cycling is important for general health, immune response and our psychological stability. So now we know much more about this our internal clock and these discoveries which were made by Nobel laureates in the United States since late 60s to late 90s led us to a big picture of understanding our internal clock from different sides. And knowing all this, I would like to say again how it is actually important to sleep a knife during each day the same time to have our external life synchronized with our internal clock. Thank you. <laughs> I will be happy to answer to your questions. So please raise your hand if you have any. Yes, yes please. please. So how about blind people? So I would say that uh, we can distinguish two categories of blind people. Uh, there are people who are absolutely blind and they do not feel any light. And when it was studied, they still have this internal clock. They have cycling of melatonin, but it is independent of the light and darkness outside. And uh, that's quite interesting that we have this 24-hour cycle of melatonin, uh, cy um, cycling of melatonin concentration, but completely blind people, they have around 25-hour cycle. So still there is something which differ in them from us, seeing light, but still they have these cycles. And people who are not completely blind, they do not see, but they still feel some light, they can adjust because the fact that it's some lighting still can adjust the system. And the second question? Yeah. 
As far as I understood that, uh, the system works like through photoreceptors. So what about like the people living in Scandinavian countries where they can't find any sun during the whole winter? How is it regulated so far? You know, the really exciting thing is that to start with 24 hour circadian rhythms, for an animal it's even not needed to be exposed to day at night. For example, exper in experiments with flies, it was shown that flies living in a complete darkness for generations, they still have these 24 hour cycles. They do not move mostly 12 hours when they move 12 hours and so on. So cycle is like inside in this protein system and you will have it anyways. Uh, it's evolutionary conserved. But if we have light, we can adjust this cycle. But even if we do not have light, it still will be existing. Oh, maybe just one question there. You? So when we sleep and we have like the lights on, uh, this get also alters our cycles, like because our like eyes can see still some light, and this could like affect our rhythm on the cycles. You mean if we uh, have some light and when we sleep? Yeah, it's going to be bad actually, uh, because this system is sensitive to light, and even if we got sleeping, uh, I guess it will be not a proper sleep actually, because you know uh, when we sleep, it's of course condition of our brain, but also there are physiological processes which should go in parallel. It's uh, another pressure in our body, and so on and so on. And these things, they are more linked not to the nervous system, but with, to these hormone things and so on. But because of light, you are going to get non proper suckling of melatonin already. And then probably you will sleep, but physiological processes during this time will not be characteristic for sleeping. And then you will not have them during the night and you will not have proper rest afterwards. <laughs>